गुड आफ्टरनून डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स नमस्कार यू ऑल आर वॉचिंग अस ऑन ई विद्या चैनल नंबर टेन एंड आई एम कुसुम प्रसाद सो डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस सेशन इज फॉर साइंस एंड फॉर क्लास टेन स्टूडेंट्स एंड टुडे इज द चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड इज चैप्टर टू एसिड बेसिस एंड सॉल्ट एंड टू टीच दिस सब्जेक्ट टू आवर आवर जो आवर एक्सपर्ट इज मिस प्रीति गोयल मैम मैम इज़ फॉर्मर पी जी टी केमिस्ट्री टीचर फ्राम समरविल इंटरनेशनल स्कूल नोएडा वेलकम मैम आपका बहुत बहुत स्वागत धन्यवाद डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड लर्नर्स यू कैन कॉन्टैक्ट अस थ्रू वेरियस मीडियम और किस तरह से आप हमें uh, इस सेशन से uh, अपनी फीडबैक और प्रतिक्रियाएँ भेज सकते हैं हम आपको बता देते हैं यू कैन कॉल अस थ्रू फोन नंबर आवर फोन नंबर इज़ एट एट ज़ीरो ज़ीरो फोर फोर ज़ीरो and you can also email us on our email id that is dth.class10@ciet.nic.in and before we start this session we want to share a very important message regarding g20 we are proud that india assumed the g20 presidency and will convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism India G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in our history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding pragmatic global solution for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest the true spirit of vasudhev kutumbakam or the world is one family so now we move to our session uh, se uh, session is for uh, class 10 students and we are going to understand uh, subject is science and the chapter we are going to take today is chapter 2 acid bases and salt so we move to our expert uh, preeti ma'am yes ma'am let's begin the session good afternoon children aap log kitchen mein to roz hi jaate hoge what do you see there you see lemons oranges coffee tea so many things have you tasted all these things of course lemons are tangy or you can say sour coffee is little bitter so today i am going to discuss with you a very interesting topic acids bases and salts so let's begin with this so first of all you see the oranges they are tangy that means the thing which has sour taste is acidic in nature and you must have heard about ammonia ammonia is basic in nature all right and we will discuss some household acids and bases as you can see vinegar or sirka which is used in tomato ketchups that is an acid its chemical name is ethanoic acid or acetic acid lemon juices they have citric acid battery acid which is used in batteries of car it is having sulfuric acid and soda water that contains carbonic acid then when we dissolve carbon dioxide in water it gives carbon carbonic acid then you see bases baking soda which is used in every home ammonia soaps are basic in nature borax is basic in nature so dear children let us begin with the properties of acids and bases and the differences between acids and bases the first difference that acids are sour in taste and bases are bitter in taste this you have already learned in your junior classes then second point also you know very well that acids turn blue litmus red and bases on the other hand turn red litmus blue then there is another chemical called as methyl orange if methyl orange is added in acids it gives red color and in bases it gives yellow color phenolphthalein it gives magenta color or dark pink color in bases and it remains colorless in acidic medium what is the reason for this it is all due to certain ions which are given by acids and bases in aqueous solutions when acids are dissolved in water they give h3o positive or hydronium ion and while bases give oh negative 
or hydroxyl ions in aqueous solutions. Now we will discuss how do we test whether a given substance is acidic or basic. This is tested which is called indicators. So, what are indicators? Indicators are those substances which change their color or which change their smell when they are mixed with acid or bases. One example you know very well that is litmus solution, others are methyl orange, phenolphthalein, then hydrangea flower, hibiscus flower, then turmeric, they are also indicators. So, indicators means which change their color or which change their smell and they indicate that a given substance is acid or bases. So, there are many types of indicators. First indicator we will discuss is natural indicators. As the name indicates, natural indicator means those which are obtained from nature. For example, litmus. You know how is litmus obtained? Litmus is obtained from a plant called lichens and turmeric. Everyone knows turmeric is used in kitchen. Then red cabbage. Red cabbage when it is mixed, its juice is mixed with acids, it gives reddish color and while in bases, it gives bluish color. Hydrangea flower, petunia flower, these are all natural indicators. Then second type of indicators are called as synthetic indicators. Synthetic indicator means which are chemicals and these are obtained in the labs, they are synthetically prepared, they are called synthetic indicators. One example is methyl orange and phenolphthalein. I have already discussed about these that it methyl orange gives red color in acids and yellow in bases. And phenolphthalein, it is a colorless substance. It gives magenta or dark pink color in bases and it remains colorless in acids. Then third type of indicators are called olfactory indicators. That means they change their smell in acids and bases. For example, onion, clove oil and vanilla essence, these change their smell. So, in acidic medium, onion will have a, another smell and in basic medium, it will give another smell. Same, same is the case with clove oil and vanilla essence. Now, ma'am, any question coming to your mind? Yes, ma'am, uh, I have one question. Suppose hmm. uh, there is only one litmus paper. Hmm. and uh, solutions are three acid uh, bases and salt hmm. then how we will test ma'am oh that's a very good question and i was going to ask this question you can see okay. i have written this as you all know children that litmus paper gives red color in acidic medium and it gives blue color in basic medium now see we have three solution one solution is water Another solution is acid and third solution is base. Okay. So, now what we have only red litmus paper. So, how we will test which solution is water, which solution is acid, which solution is base. So, what we will do? On this litmus paper, we will put a drop of water. So, will there be any change in color? No, no. water will not give any change into the litmus paper. Acid with red litmus paper, there will be no change. But base with red litmus paper, it will change into blue. So, we can find out that this solution is a base. Hmm. And now the litmus paper will become blue. Okay. All right. Hmm. Now, we will again put a drop of water on this litmus paper. So, blue will remain blue. Hmm. So, we will find out that this is water and not an acid. Yes. And if we put a drop of acid on this blue litmus paper which has turned blue, then it will again change into red. So, yes. that is how we can find out whether a given solution is water, acid or base even if we have only one indicator. Hmm. So, hope you understand this question. Yes, ma'am. Very good. Now, one more question I have and that question is? If suppose there is a visually impaired student, he cannot see, then which indicator can we use from these litmus, turmeric, vanilla essence or petunia leaves? 
so you know litmus will change the color so mm. the person who cannot see will not be able to identify mm. turmeric will also change color turmeric gives red color in basic medium and no and remains yellow in acidic medium mm. then vanilla essence will change the smell mm. so visually impaired student can identify whether a given substance is acid or base with the help of vanilla, vanilla essence, essence because there is no change in the color it mm. only changes the smell smell good so that is how we can identify all right yes ma'am so now we will discuss some common indicators and how they change color with acids and bases so you can draw a table along with me okay so now you see i am writing serial number first i will write a name of the acid that is hcl or hydrochloric acid and i will put red litmus red litmus blue litmus methyl orange phenolphthalein okay so hcl red litmus will remain red blue litmus will turn red because this is an acid right methyl orange will turn red and phenolphthalein will remain colorless now suppose if we take a base for example naoh or sodium hydroxide how will it change the color red litmus will change into blue blue litmus will remain blue methyl orange will turn yellow and phenolphthalein will be magenta or dark pink or dark pink if some neutral substance is there then there will be no change in the colors of these substances i hope you understand yes. so blue litmus red litmus methyl orange and phenolphthalein these are important indicators now we will discuss the chemical properties of some acids and bases so the first chemical property which i am going to discuss is reaction of acids on metals as you know when metals react with acids they produce hydrogen gas and hydrogen gas comes out in the form of bubbles and how can we identify that this given gas is a hydrogen gas or the gas which is coming out is hydrogen there is a test for hydrogen and the test for hydrogen is that if we bring a burning splinter near the gas it will burn with a pop sound so let us write some equations for that as you can see on the screen acids plus metals they give metal salt and hydrogen gas some equations like hcl or hydrochloric acid when it is reacted with zinc metal it gives zinc chloride and hydrogen gas if we react h2so4 or sulfuric acid with zinc it gives zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas so the metal salt is formed according to the acids if we take hydrochloric acid then the salts will be chlorides if we take magnesium metal it will be magnesium chloride if we take any other metal then chloride of that metal will be formed when we react it with hydrochloric acid similarly with sulfuric acid the salt formed will be sulfate like with zinc and sulfuric acid it gives zinc sulfate and hydrogen if we take magnesium then it will be magnesium sulfate and hydrogen hope you understand now i will show you the picture how this experiment is done as you can see here this is a test tube in this tube we have taken zinc granules and we arrange the apparatus as shown here we put dilute sulfuric acid in this put a cork and a delivery tube this delivery tube is opening into a soap soap solution all right 
So, when we add dilute sulfuric acid into this, you will see the bubbles are formed and this bub these bubbles are of hydrogen gas. This hydrogen gas will come through this delivery tube, it will come here, here, here and then it will go into the soap solution. And you know that hydrogen gas is insoluble in water. So, what will happen? Bubbles will be formed. Hmm. You must have made bubbles with soap solution, all of you. You must have seen in the markets also one person makes bubbles of soap solution. Similarly, the bubbles will be formed when you see the hydrogen gas is passed into this soap solution. And these bubbles will have which gas inside them? There will be hydrogen gas because we are passing hydrogen gas into the soap solution. So, the bubbles which are coming out inside these bubbles there is hydrogen gas and if we bring a burning candle near the bubbles the hydrogen gas will burn with a pop sound. So, that is how we can identify and can we can prove that when metals react with acids it produce hydrogen gas and the salt which is which remains in aqueous solution in the test tube and the hydrogen gas comes out and how we can prove that this is a hydrogen gas because it burns with a pop sound. I hope you understand. Yes ma'am. Very good. Now, we will discuss another property that is reaction of base with metals. Just now we discussed that when metals react with acids they produce hydrogen gas. When base react with metal they also produce hydrogen gas. But the reaction is comparatively very very slow and secondly all the metals do not produce hydrogen gas with bases only few metals produce hydrogen gas with metals and this reaction takes place only on heating. If we just add base with metal and we do not heat the reaction will be very very slow. So, on heating not on boiling we just have to heat a little and then only the hydrogen gas will be produced and a salt will also be produced. As you can see on the screen when zinc reacts with NaOH that is a base then it produces Na2ZnO2. The name of the salt is sodium zincate plus hydrogen gas. So, main thing you have to learn is that all the bases do not react with metals and all the metals do not react with bases, only few metals react with bases which are comparatively reactive. And then hydrogen gas is produced, this reaction is very very slow and we have to heat, otherwise the reaction will not take place. Then next property is reaction of metals with sorry reaction of acids with metal carbonates and bicarbonates. You all know very well that carbonates, what is the formula of the carbonates like magnesium carbonate MgCO3, zinc carbonate ZnCO3. So, when we add acids one gas comes out in the form of bubbles or we call it effervescence. So, which gas comes out with effervescence have you ever heard that is a carbon dioxide gas. So, carbonate when they react with acids they produce carbon dioxide gas, hydrogen carbonates or bicarbonates they also produce carbon dioxide gas. As you can see here metal carbonate plus acids gives you metal salt, carbon dioxide and water. So, the reaction we can say Na2CO3 that is sodium carbonate plus HCl gives NaCl that is the salt. H2O and CO2. Similarly, if we take hydrogen carbonates or bicarbonates NaHCO3 plus HCl gives you NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. So, whenever CO2 gas comes out there is brisk effervescence. Brisk effervescence means it comes out with a lot of a lot of bubbles. Then again the question comes how do we know that this is a carbon dioxide gas not any other gas? Do you know the properties of carbon dioxide gas? One property is that it extinguishes the fire and second property is it turns lime water milky. So, I will show you how we test that the gas which comes out is a carbon dioxide gas. Now, look at the screen. This is the apparatus. Here we have taken sodium carbonate 
and we are adding it dilute hydrochloric acid through the thistle funnel. This is the thistle funnel and we put arrange the apparatus like this then carbon dioxide will be produced and this carbon dioxide will come out through the delivery tube and we will pass it into lime water. What is lime water? It is not the lemon water, it is the water of calcium hydroxide, solution of calcium hydroxide in water and if we dissolve CaO or calcium oxide in water and we filter it that also gives the calcium hydroxide solution or lime water. So, when we pass carbon dioxide in lime water, lime water turns milky. Can you identify or can you guess which substance will be formed? Okay, let me show you by writing the equation. See lime water is CaOH whole twice. This is lime water and when we pass carbon dioxide gas in this it gives calcium carbonate. Calcium carbonate is insoluble in water plus H2O. Okay. This calcium carbonate is not soluble in water so it gives milkiness to the lime water. CaCO3 does not dissolve in water so it, lime water turns milky. But do you know what will happen if we keep on passing the CO2 into this lime water when it has turned milky then what will happen? Will the milkiness increase or will milkiness will disappear? So if we keep passing lime in lime water carbon dioxide a large amount of carbon dioxide is passed then lime water first turns milky and then milkiness disappears. Why it disappears? Now look here. See we have passed some carbon dioxide in lime water and lime water turns into CaCO3 and H2O. Now in this we pass more carbon dioxide alright. So I am writing carbon dioxide again. Then what will happen? It forms calcium hydrogen carbonate HCO3 Ca HCO3 whole twice and this calcium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water. So when it dissolves then what will happen? Milkiness will disappear everything solution will become clear. So that is why when we pass carbon dioxide in lime water for some time lime water turns milky but if we keep on passing carbon dioxide for a long time then milkiness disappears. This is due to the formation of calcium hydrogen carbonate or calcium bicarbonate which dissolves in water and milkiness disappears. Now you can see in the equations I have written on the screen also. So first on passing CO2 to lime water it becomes milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate but we when we pass excess of carbon dioxide milkiness will disappear due to the formation of calcium hydrogen carbonate and this is a test for CO2 and this is very very important for you to remember alright. So now we move to the next topic that is what happens when acids and bases react together. Till now we discussed how metals react with bases then we discuss metal carbonates with acids. Now we will discuss when one acid and base react together what will happen. This reaction forms salt and water. When acids and bases react together they form salt and water as I am writing here acid plus base gives you salt and water. This reaction is called neutralization reaction. Neutralization reaction that means there is no acid no base acid and base cancel the effect of each other. So when they react 
they form salt and water as you can see on the screen HCl hydrochloric acid plus NaOH sodium hydroxide they form salt which salt NaCl sodium chloride hmm. and water. So, ma'am uh, is it a uh, uh, neutralized Yes, it is neutral. I will give you one more example okay. Hannah, then you one question will definitely come to your mind I am sure. Then now similarly H2SO4 that is sulfuric acid it reacts with KOH and forms potassium sulphate and water. So, this is the, how we can say that this is a neutralization reaction. I can discuss one experiment. Suppose you take one acid, one mole of an acid and uh, one mole of HCl and one mole of NaOH. You take equal amount like say 10 milliliter of one mole HCl and 10 milliliter of one mole NaOH. In 10 mole of uh, in one mole of HCl 10 milliliter you add litmus. So, it will turn what? litmus will turn red and in 10 milliliter of NaOH you add again litmus it will turn blue. Now, when you mix the two solution you will see that the solution has become colorless. Hmm. So, that is neutral neither it is as acidic nor basic. It becomes so, that neutralized. Is a, that is called neutralization. Okay. Now, I will discuss another thing reaction of metal oxides with bases. So, you see when metal oxides react with bases sorry with acids metal oxides plus acid gives you metal salt and water. Now ask the question I think one question must be coming to your mind. Yes ma'am. Is this a neutralized reaction? Yes, this is neutralization. You can see metal oxides are hmm. basic in nature, hmm. and you will study in chapter also that metal oxides have basic nature and non metal oxides are acidic in acidic. nature. So, metal oxides are like bases, they react with acid and they form salt and water. So, this is equivalent to neutralization reaction, as you can see here, hmm. like copper oxide plus HCl it gives CuCl2 which is a salt and H2O. So, copper oxide is black in color when it reacts with HCl it forms salt CuCl2 which is bluish green in color and water this is also equivalent to neutralization reaction okay. right. Now, right. another thing your question must be coming to your mind non metal oxide with bases. Hmm. So, non metal oxide is acidic in nature when it reacts with a base it again forms salt and water. So, non metal oxides you can see a carbon dioxide is a mm. non metal oxide this is similar to carbon dioxide passing in lime water which you mm. have already learned. So, this is non metal oxide with a base COH whole twice is a base gives calcium carbonate and H2 all right. Yes. So, now, the question is what is common between all acids are or there is some similarity also between acid and bases yes. The similarity is that both acids and bases are good conductors of electricity as you can see here if we put this apparatus here we have taken two nails we are connected to a battery and bulb and we have taken dilute sulfur uh, hydrochloric acid and we will see that the bulb blows it means that HCl is passing the electricity. If we take some base here it then also the bulb will glow that shows that base will also conduct electricity. So, both acids and bases they produce ions in presence of water. So, they can conduct electricity. So, that is why we say that acids and bases are ionic in nature. We have already told you in the beginning that acids produce H positive ion and bases produce OH negative ion. So, you can see acids they produce H positive ion like HCl is H positive and Cl negative H2SO4 2 H positive and sulphate 2 negative nitric acid H positive and nitrate. So, this H positive is very very small it is only a proton. So, it cannot stay independently it mixes with water and forms hydronium ion that is H3O positive ion which we also call hydrated hydrogen ion. So, acids produce H3O positive ions in aqueous solution. Similarly, bases 
they produce OH negative ions in water, NaOH gives Na positive and OH negative. So, they produce OH negative ions in solution calcium oxide, calcium and OH negative ion, ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH and those bases which are soluble in water they are called alkalis. So, when the neutralization reaction occurs H positive and OH negative form water. Yes ma'am. So, so ma'am, it's time to wind up the session. Thank you so much ma'am for providing so many information and guiding our students and learners ma'am. Thank you ma'am. Thank you. So dear students and learners, now it's time to wind up the session. But before uh, we want to share a very important uh, message regarding NCRT textbooks. NCRT textbooks for 2023-24 are available throughout the country. These textbooks may be purchased directly from NCERT sale counters located at New Delhi, Ahmedabad, Kolkata and Guwahati and these sale counters will be functional on all the weekdays including, including gazetted holidays, Saturdays and Sundays from 9.30 am to 6 pm. And if you want to place order for the books online from our website, uh, you can note down the website uh, address ncertbooks.ncert.gov.in and these books will be delivered at your doorstep with no delivery fee. And if you want the soft copy of the P books in PDF version, you can also download free from NCRT, Diksha, eParshala website and mobile app. So, dear students and learners, please visit the website ncert.nic.in to know more about the authorized vendors. So, it is time to wind up the session. Lekin aap kahi mat jaiye, abhi bahut saare satr aur bahut saare rochak aur gyan vardak satr aur bhi hain. Hamara agla satr hooga kakshah 10 ke vidhyaartiyo ke liye urdu ka session. To aap judhe rahiye e-vidya channel se. Namaskar.